Hello everyone, welcome to another great StarCraft 2 game. This is going to be between a green Terran called Fort and Fort is actually Sky, who was previously known as Random. So let me explain this a bit. He starts to play as Random, because, well, that's his nickname that he likes and has for real. And, but people confused it for that he was supposed to play Random as a race. So then he changed, changed name to Sky, and on that account that he was known for random and is now called Sky on, he plays Protoss, and on this second account he plays Terran on, and on this second account, as you can see, he's called Fort. Anyway, Fort starts at the top left corner of this map. I believe this map is Shakaras Plateau, but I could be wrong, and. There's nothing unusual going on at the start here. Um, he has just made a pile, uh, supplied a pot, and is about to make a barracks. Uh, his opponent, John Edv, who I'm just going to call John, hasn't done anything really uh, out of the ordinary for Protoss either. He has made a pylon, and he's now working on a gateway. And after he began with the gateway, he sent out his scouts. Uh, some Protoss players turn out their scouts as soon as they have put down the pylon, uh, but you only li really have to do that if you're up against the Zerg or if you don't know what race your opponent is. Because if, you're, if your opponent is a Zerg and he does some fancy Zerg or Zergling rush, you really have to know about that as soon as possible. So that's where they send out their probe right after they have put down that pylon. As opposed to if you're playing against a Protoss or a Terran, you really don't have to send out the scout that early and can wait until you have put down the gateway to send out the scout. Now we, as soon as the gateway finished, he began with the cybernetics core and both players went off uh, to scout in the wrong direction first. So uh, John just ran into the wall here after scouting the bottom left corner and random scatter on the top right first and we're now heading down to the bottom right um so john passed by this way and ran on this way and as we can see here john did not visit the xelnaga's uh, watchtower on on the way over to this side of the map while random did visit the xelnaga watchtower on his way to the, this side of the map um some players will get to do that but it's actually really good to do because Chances are that when you activate this Xanaga Watchtower to reveal the enti this entire area, you might see your opponent scout and through that way figure out. <laughs> wait, wait, what's going on here? Uh, <laughs> his zealot is stuck between buildings. I don't think I ever have seen this before in a StarCraft 2 game. StarCraft 1, sure, because the pathing, AI pathing was so bad. Uh, and building blocking was bad, but the building blocking is also great. It means that you can block a ramp, like we see here. But as I was saying, if you move your scout back to Naga Watchtower when you send it out to scout, chances are that you might spot your opponent's scout and through that figure out where your opponent spawns somewhere. Where your opponent spawns, sorry about that. Uh, language error, anyway. Uh, Random just finished his uh, expansion and are now making it into an orbital command and the Protoss expansion is halfway through. We saw the mule drop there as soon as the command center finished and I think he had a bit of energy right as uh, this expansion finished up. Usually so some I've, I've seen some pro players really time it that well so they exactly get up to 50 energy by, energy by the time their expansion finishes. Which is just really ridiculous. More gateways coming down here for uh, John, and he did send a scout over here, but I don't think he saw that much. He, he saw there's a plate apart and the bunker go down, but he didn't see the expansion yet. But I think he figured, uh, realizes that there is a expansion there. Uh, otherwise, we have quiet. Um, actually, we only have more gateways coming down. The Twilight Council 
which does not surprise me as well as more centuries. Uh, since this maker Twilight Council and not a robotics bay, I think that he is going to go for a. Uh... He's killing his own zealot here. <laughs> I think it's zealot thinking, oh no, I'm being killed because I got stuck. No, I won't do it again. Either way, I. I think we will see high tempers in, in this game. It is a very common strategy to go for against Terrans because um, Bio is really the best unit composition to go for as Terran against Pervitas, and Bio units are so fragile to that psionic storm. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see some psionic storm action in this game. And that is quite a few centuries. Uh, a lot of Protoss players don't do that ma many centuries, uh, but uh, it's really good against uh, Terran because you not only have the force field, but you also have the guardian shield, which uh, reduces range damage uh, by two, and Terran only have ranged units apart from the SEVs. So in the, in the long run, that's going to make a huge difference in this game. And as we're saying, most of the time, uh, it's not uncommon that Protoss players do sentries and mix it into their army. But a lot of sentries, uh, I mostly tend to see in games against Zerg to block off the ramp fr from uh, harassments, and not so much in Terran games. I think uh, think they are really underestimated in uh, Protoss versus Terran games. Just taking a sip from my water there, and there's the Templar, Templar archives just now finished. And I wouldn't su be surprised if we see the uh, Psionic Storm research kick in as soon as he reaches uh, 200 gas here. No, not? Oh well. Going for the Templar archives, however, does imply that he would go for high tempers. He does ha have a few high tempers here now. I um, I guess he wants to get those out first to start generating that energy for them. And now I think we will see the Psionic Storm. Or not. I suck so horribly at predicting what these players will do. Either way... John just now taking second expansion and round of moving out with uh, his third command center, if you include the one he began, started with, uh, to claim his second expansion, as well as he's sending out his factory to scout with, which uh, is uh, very common for players, to, Terran players, to do in Terran versus Protoss because that you you don't really you don't really need anything out of your factory in Terran versus Protoss, since you pretty much always just go bio builds against Protoss. But he does need the factory to be able to make nukes, but uh, it's not often that we see nukes in StarCraft 2 games. We see them more than in StarCraft 1 games, but uh, still not that often. And it seems like he's going to land it here to deny John from expanding here, but he also does have a marine here, but uh, maybe we'll walk up with it to this location to block that off as well, but uh, I'm not entirely sure. Gateway is coming down to block this way, I like that, but uh, I don't consider it that important against Terran, more, more something I would be concerned about if I was up against a Zerg. And I pretty much never play Protoss anyway, so I don't know why I say I, but... Uh, for those who don't know, I'm a Terran player. Just taking another sip from my water right there. It uh, does look like we we will see some action coming now. Random or Fort moving out of his base towards uh, John's second expansion here. And he does see that this year. Steams moves in and snipes that Nexus. There is no chance. 
Oh, I totally missed that there was a drop down here. That's why John moved away with his army. I did wonder why he backed up with his army when Fort was coming down here. And uh, this third expansion has been denied and he tried to rebuild it straight away, but it got cancelled. I don't know why he tried to rebuild it right away with Randall's uh, or Fort's army still there. One Marauder gets left behind here and quickly taken out. And there goes the expansion up again. Uh, I feel like that was not a good thing for the Protoss to get behind a Terran player in expansions here. Uh, or actually, it would have been worse if it was a Zerg player that got behind in expansions. But uh, since uh, Forts now have two expansions, and with that mule as well, his income is just going to kick off really, really far here in a moment when more of that mule, mule kicking. But uh, John is out for blood and he denies this expansion from Fort. But we will see if there is anything else that he can do. The excitement builds up, and Fort just lost a dropship here. I, we can see that I did have it selected, but I couldn't see it on the minimap. It seems like he tried to go for another harass, possibly pick off uh, this forge entirely, and I did see... I think I did see two forges here before, so he did pick one off earlier in the earlier harassment over here. But this time he was prepared with a, a few stockos and two high tempers here. And something is going on over here. Oh, go stealth glow. Cl ghosts. Cloaked ghosts. Or s has laid. By the looks of it, has laid down AMP here. Now some detection, I think, came into play by the Protoss. And Here's a huge battle going on. All these units got EP or most of them, so they have no energy and chill remaining. So I feel like this is a battle that um, that John can't win, and he decides to pull out as well, which is exactly what I think he needs to do. Uh, uh, but he is ahead in supply here. Azeal are trying to take out this expansion by himself, but uh, hero says all these marauders and marines. Anyway, as I was saying, I I am not sure who if uh, John could have won that fight. I do. I he definitely would have done it if he hadn't been EM, EMP'd by those ghosts since he's so far ahead in the supply count but uh, random is catching up here really quickly and repairing those medevacs those invaluable medevacs they have quite a bit of energy remaining so it's definitely worth repairing them now we can see here that uh, Random has claimed this Xenonaga Watchtower and sees exactly that all these gateways is lay getting down in the expansion and he's trying to exp Ford is trying to expand. Whoa! Did we just. Oh my god, a nuke is coming down for right over here on top of John's army. If you don't move away, they're all going to get nuked. Oh my god! Almost all of them got nuked except for. <laughs> and he says lol. Only four High Templars survived and an Archon. All of his other army units got nuked. And there's a side storm going down on Randolph's army, but he is so far ahead in the army count right now that he just doesn't care. <laughs> I don't see what John can do right now to get back in this game, but he did just warp in a new army on the high ground and he did ha still have his, his uh, few stalkers and high, high temperos on that high ground from earlier. And there comes the uh, 
the uh, EMP and here goes another battle in the middle of the choke for the Protoss. This is not anywhere we understand with the Terran army lined up uh, all like this and himself clumped up in the uh, um, ramp. But uh, it feels like Random shouldn't have pulled back here. If he wanted to make a fight he should have stayed right here where, where the Protoss army was all clunged up together on the ramp. Uh, and I feel like uh, if he has char charged research for his zealot, but I fe feel like Blink could really be useful for him as well to avoid getting stuck in key positions like the ramp. Uh, both players macroing fairly well here. The Protoss army is back in action, though he is still far behind in, or not, not as far behind as where was earlier in this army supply. But uh, he's still behind in that arm supply. And we can see here that that uh, in, in the army supply, uh, Fort's army is almost twice as large as uh, uh, John's. But it is being slowly being evenly out here. And I think, think we'll have another battle coming out here. Uh, John has no detection, I see no observer here, and so he can't deal with these stealth ghosts just EMPing away on his entire army. I believe every High Templar he had here lo just lost all of his energy, and there we can hear the snipes going off on the High Templars. And here comes another battle, steam is up, and there's a scan, I don't really recognize what, I don't really know why I did that because it's on a dark temple or anything like that and there's a GG um, some last comments I see that uh, random has his entire army hotkey to number five as you can see here a one common thing for uh, higher league players to do is that they hotkey their medivacs separately from their army that way the, they can tell the medivacs to stop which will cause them just to heal every unit in range and still micro their army around. Uh, that, that way they, they will use their medevacs a lot more efficient, efficiently. And if you are a Protoss player going up against a Terran, I think this is clear evidence of that. You, you will need observers uh, to deal with those cloaked ghosts. And this also proved that as a Terran player, if you're playing against uh, Protoss, even if the factor may seem completely useless, it is really great to get those nukes, uh, both not just for trying to nuke the Protoss army, which probably won't be easy, but also to harass uh, Mineral Alliance. For example, you can put a ghost down here, scan up here, and you can put the nuke about right here, which will still kill about pretty much half the probes at this main base. Just some tips for you guys out there. Another another thing I have seen players do is they put a ghost right here, scan over here, and put the nuke here. Though if you scan over here, the protoss might realize, oh, okay, there's a nuke coming. It's probably at where they scan. So you might want to scan at another similar place, like right here, to kind of confuse the protoss players. Okay, is a nuke coming here? Or is it coming here? And one other thing that I have seen Terran players do is that they, if they're plan planning a nuke, nuke in this location, then right before that, they make a make a drop here that we saw uh, Fort do, to you know really give the Protoss player the warning that their base is under attack. Then they drop a nuke the, here in hopes of that the base is under attack sound will cloud the nuke sound that coming right here. So really making those uh, true pronged attacks can really pay off in the uh, uh, long term game. Either way this was a very great game. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and see you guys next time.